and hello everyone welcome back to another tutorial so in this tutorial we'll be looking into love 2d love 2d is basically a framework that you can use to make 2d games in lua if all of this was jargon you don't understand then the most important thing you need to know is that love is what you use to make 2d games and you use it to make 2D games in Lua. So you need to know Lua. If you don't know Lua, I do recommend watching my course on it. I do have an entire crash course covering everything you will need to know in order to start working with it here. Now, first of all, you need to install Love2D. If you are on Windows, then you can just go and get the installer. If you're on Mac, you can get the zip. And if you're on Ubuntu or Linux, you can just get one of these. Since I am on Arch, I can just do this. I'm going to go to Terminal, New Terminal, and just Pacman-S Love. And we just need to sudo that. And that will, whoa, and that will install Love 2D for me. So yeah, as you can see, it's already installed and up to date. So I'm not going to install it, but if you're on Arch, that's how you would install it. Cool, then once you have it installed, then you can just say love, and that should pop up something similar to this. You might not have this, ex same, this exactly same thing here. It highly depends. I have love version 11.3. If you have a lower or a higher version of love, you will see something different. I do recommend having the same version of love as I do, or at least a higher version because a lot of the features may not exactly work on later or newer versions of love. So I'd recommend having 11.3 the same as mine. If you ever wonder about anything or whatnot, you can just go to the Love2D website, so love2d.org, and you can click on this wiki here. This wiki will basically give you all you need to know about love. We won't be covering every single thing here, but we will be covering quite a lot of this. For example, let's go to the uh, let's see, let's go to sound. Let's see, you want to play some sound, which we will cover in a later video. As you can see, you have a bunch of things here you can use to work with sound. Let's say we want to go to a window, then here have a bunch of things you can do with the window. So, yeah, there's a bunch of things you can do here. I'm only going to show you the most basic, and we will be building two games at the end, just so you have a good idea of what we'll be working with. Okay, now I think we're ready. Let's get started. So first we need to just move this to the right because I don't like it if it's at the bottom. I do love it at, if it's at the right side. Now first let's create a new file. I'm going to call this main.lua. You need to have at least one main.lua file here in order to be for love to be able to execute. Otherwise love may not know which file to execute. So here it's main.lua and now I'm just going to close that so we have more space. So we're still inside that file. Now take note. I have a terminal open, but if you're on Windows, I do believe you can just double click that love, that main.lua file, and that should run love 2D, but I'm not sure. If you're on Windows, I would actually recommend opening up the command line, same on Mac, opening up the command line, and just saying love dot in that directory, because as you can see, I'm in this directory right here. So if I were to just, let's say, open up my folder here, so funner dot, as you can see, there's main.lua. I'm in this folder right here. Now, first thing we need to do is we need to set up a basic project. So to do that, we need to go underscore G and make sure you do have love to the installed. Otherwise, this might not work. Dot love. This means make this a global variable with the name of love. And we're going to require the module called love. So basically, this is normal Lua. We're just importing a module called love. Then next up, we need to create three functions. These three functions are the basic concepts of running a game. So first we have a function called love. They need to have love at the start here. Love.load, this is very important. I'm going to explaining all of this in a second. We can just ignore this for now. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste them two more times. And I'm gonna close that. In this, we can make love.update, and update will take in dt, and I'll explain that in a second. And here we can say love.draw. Okay, so let's explain what these are. 
Now in every game, you have three stages. You have the load, the update, and the drawing stage. Live 2D makes this incredibly simple to do the loading, the update, and drawing in the respective functions. One of the reasons I do love Love is because of this right here. Because it's languages like Java, for example, you'll have to actually go through and make these functions yourself and let them work in the background as they should. Where Love 2D has already configured a lot, a lot of this for you. So first, loading is to basically load in data when the application starts up. So when we boot up the game, this will load all of the data we need. So we need to put things in here that we want to load. Then here with update, this basically runs every once every 60 frames. This should run once every 60 frames. So this is 60 frames per second. Love 2D is kind of locked to 60 frames per second. It can go lower if the game requires a lot of resources, but it's kind of locked to 60 frames per second. So once you start this up, you'll get 60 frames a second. DT is basically delta time. It's the time between this frame and the last. Currently, you don't have to worry too much about this. It's mostly just math. So don't worry too much about DT. We'll get deeper into that later. But basically, this is every frame. Imagine that it's a frame. So you have 60 frames a second. This will be every frame. It's the time between this frame and the last. Love to draw. Oh, wait, and we're still here. And this will just also update everything. So let's say we have a player. If we want the player to move, the player will be moved inside of this update function here. So this will move the player. Then we have draw and this will draw everything to the screen. So first we move the player and then we draw the player, the player at its new location. Or we, uh, the player gets hit and then we update a heart getting destroyed in the game. That's what we draw then. Basically, that's how it works. We'll get deeper into these things as the tutorials go on, but for right now, it's not too important, but we will, we will get to it. So let's start off with just creating a basic hello world. So we're just going to skip these two for now. We don't have to worry about them. And here we can say love, and you'll notice most of love's important functions start with love. Got the graphics. Graphics is what we use to draw something to the screen. So we use graphics dot print, and this will just basically print to the screen. It's very simple. It doesn't do too much. And we can just print hello world. All right. Now, if we were to say love and then dot, this means run love in this folder and it will find that main file and we'll run it. You'll see this, but then you'll also see this little pop up right here. Just saying hello world. There's a little icon. There's some text, which we can change later. And here's like the basic functionality you'll have. And yeah, that's the basics. We have created our first application. It, although it just displays hello world, it's a first game. Now let's do something a bit more intense than just printing something to the screen. Just so I can show you the difference between load, update, and draw. So here, let's create a variable called number. We'll make that equal to zero. Take note, this is a global variable. You can either do it like this, or you can say underscore g dot number. So that this will load in this number when the game starts. It needs to be global because we need to access it between the other functions. Then this update right here, we need to update that number. So with every frame, we want to update this number. So we can say number because we're accessing this number right here. If you don't know Lua, I do recommend you go watch that tutorial I made. And we can say number plus one. This will take this number and it will just add one to it. Then here, where we do this, we can just display number. So I'll explain what this does more in a second. Let's quickly run it and see what we get. So right here, you see a little number constantly increasing. That is this number right here. So let's just move this to the side. First, we set the number. So when the game loads, we set the number to zero. So once this boots up, this will be zero. Then every time with every frame, this number updates. So this number increases with one with every frame. And in this draw right here, this will print the number to the screen. So as you can see, we first set the number 
And this only runs once, this load, that only runs once. This update, however, and this draw runs every 60 or every frame. So these two runs every frame. And this prints it every frame. And that's the basics. We didn't do a lot, but we did get through the basics. We created a variable on the load, we updated a variable and we draw it, draw it on the screen. If you did this and you didn't have any problems, you'll do perfectly fine. Love2D is perfect for you. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And I will see you all again in the next Love2D tutorial.